Hello everyone. I've been reading about memes for the last few weeks and want to share what I found. If this seems like a surprising topic of choice to you, chances are you're not aware of the surprising place that the term meme came from. And that surprising place is the mind of this guy back before the internet came out, who has surprisingly mostly gone along with where we've taken that term since. Memes are a deeper concept than you'd think, and knowing what they are makes human nature, human culture, and human progress make a lot more sense. So what am I talking about? Give me a minute and I'll tell you. A good place to start with memes is a little further back with this guy, Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin was out there trying to explain the world and came up with a smart idea he basically said, if there are replicators trying to copy themselves, and if those replicators have to compete in a limited environment, meaning some will fail, then the fitter replicators will be more successful at that, and evolution will follow. A bit later, Richard Dawkins elaborated on that, saying genes use hosts, like me and you, to replicate themselves. And the process of doing that doesn't necessarily have to take the well-being of the hosts into consideration. He goes on to call these hosts, which are again, me and you and anyone you've ever loved. The throwaway survival machine. So we are essentially these temporary meat puppets. And the real story is about the genes who exist on a much grander timeline, in effect, using us to create copies of themselves for sometimes millions of years. Dawkins then casually threw in a chapter at the end of the book, saying that Darwinism is too big of a theory to apply only to genes. And there must be other types of replicators out there somewhere in the cosmos that follow the same Darwinian principles. He even said there might be a second type of replicator on Earth and offered the example of ideas themselves. So basically, just as we're hosts for genes and act in strange ways to spread those genes to the next generation, we're also hosts for ideas and act in peculiar ways to spread those ideas to others. Even if those ideas aren't true, and even if the act of spreading those ideas is overtly against our own best interests in the eyes of people who don't hold those ideas. To give a less dramatic example, you could probably say that trying to spread ideas of the earth being flat to other people will probably hurt your sex life. Ideas are considered replicators here because there's something Darwinian in the way that ideas compete with each other for our attention. Then we allow certain ones into our brains while rejecting others. Then we take those successful ideas and pass them on to other people, forming cultural evolution. When those mechanics are in place, we call those ideas memes, and the study of memes is called memetics. So a meme is any way of doing things or thinking about things that isn't instinctual, but instead culturally transmitted from one person to another. And the extent to which we are a meme-based species goes a long way towards explaining why people are so weirdly different than the rest of life on Earth. So, for example, the way people think about houses and go about building houses is different than other animals. A bird instinctively knows how to build a nest without watching other birds do it. But people don't instinctively know how to build houses or even have the idea to build something resembling a human house without getting that from other people. So knowing how to build it and having the idea to build it are memes that we culturally transmit from person to person and tweak through the generations. I was sitting around trying to explain this stuff to my dating person and think I came up with a good example while I was doing it. If you're decorating your room and you put these on your wall, you probably got that idea from seeing other people do it. Christmas lights as bedroom decor is a meme. If you decide to put your own spin on it, maybe you put some other type of light that's doing something similar to the Christmas lights, then you're creatively mutating the meme. And if other people adapt it, then the meme is evolving. If a bunch of memes cluster together to form something coherent, it's called a meme complex or a memeplex. Sticking with room decor, mid-century modern is a memeplex. Mid-century modern isn't any one idea. It's a bunch of memes clustered together to make a larger coherent idea, which competitively evolved against other memes and memeplexes to end up in most of our living rooms. Most of what I talk about in this channel are memes and memeplexes. And whether or not you take what I'm saying and allow it into your brain, and maybe even spread it to other people, has to do with a lot of things. But just to name a few, it could be my skills as a communicator, the strength of my insights, maybe perceptions you have of me, and also very importantly, the viability of the memes themselves. 
Okay, so what am I getting at here? Memetics answers a question that's been bugging me for a while, which is, why do otherwise intelligent people believe things that aren't true? And the answer is that ideas don't need to be true to be attractive. They're attractive because they competitively evolved that way. It's like asking, why do we buy things we don't need? It's because the nature of capitalism means that products are pitched against each other for attractiveness. And within that, certain products crop up that are just so attractive that we just need to have them. And we'll spend our paychecks on them even if we can't afford it. So take the meme, voter fraud cost Trump the 2020 election. That meme is currently being believed and spread by many people, not because it's as of now definitively true, but because it's telling people things that they want to hear. And it's doing that within a field of competing memes that to those people are doing a worse job of being psychologically appealing. And the same goes for last time, with the meme that Russian interference cost Hillary the election. In both cases, there was evidence of tampering, but in neither case has there been enough evidence to substantiate the claim that the tampering was enough to actually swing the election. But in both cases, people believed and spread those memes, not because they're definitively true, but because they did the best job, among other memes, of delivering messages that people wanted to hear. These ideas, like the voter fraud memes, which I think are more speculative than anything, are often wrapped up in this guise and presented as if they were irrefutably true, precisely because it makes them more psychologically appealing, which makes them more infectious and makes us fall deeper into the cycle of perpetuating false ideas. So to recap some points, one, as a public, we're only able to consume and pass around a limited amount of information. Two, this puts pressure on ideas to be appealing so they can succeed in being spread over others. Three, ideas being fully grounded in truth, unfortunately, isn't a necessary criterion for appeal and success. Because of all this, populations sometimes end up spreading infectious, factually troubled ideas. Sometimes this Darwinistic pressure leads to ideas being essentially polished into mimetic diamonds, where we can't really picture improving them anymore. And they just practically beg to be copied and shared exactly as is. I'm talking about these, which are again, highly infectious memes, which don't necessarily have to be grounded in truth. Just like crocodiles stopped evolving because they're perfect at what they're trying to be in the habitats that they're in, these memes stopped evolving because they're perfect at what they're trying to say in the cultural spaces that they're in. If we like a meme enough to allow it into our heads and let it become part of what we think, and part of that meme isn't based on truth, and then someone tries to present us with the truth to make that meme measure up with reality, there's a good chance we might respond with some type of hostility, where we, in effect, become a soldier fighting for threatened memes, fighting against truth. So that was depressing, so let's try to find some productive ground here. Given everything I just said, what useful things can we extract from that? And my answer of choice is I think that knowing about memes helps us separate people from the bad ideas in their heads. It's similar to give an example that you're not expecting. It's similar to how I think about heroin. If you think of how addictive heroin is and how that probably led to it being such a successful drug that so many people are exposed to, that helps you be forgiving of people who are addicted to it. And it helps you separate the concept of heroin from those people except swap heroin with whatever meme or meme flex you think is hurting someone's outlook. That doesn't mean people are absolved of fault. We still need to hold people accountable for their actions, but I think it's generally more productive to criticize bad ideas than the people who hold them. And I think knowing about the concept of memes helps us psychologically get there. It's a subtle distinction, but I think a good one. At the end of the day, we're all just meat puppets trying to make sense of the world. And the world does a good job of confusing our ability to do it. So we should try to be understanding of people who are maybe doing a worse job of pulling that off. By the way, some of you might not like the term meme or the field of memetics, but that's fine. The word meme is just useful for us to think about ideas in a certain way. All you have to do to be on board with the gist of what I'm saying is to agree with two things. One is that there's a Darwinian selection pressure between ideas for us as their carriers and their propagators. And two, truth isn't necessarily the deciding metric for their success in doing that. Going back to using the word, most of this video has been about the dangers of memes, but memes don't have to harm us. They can and often do empower us. Memes of science and technology and medicine make life more comfortable, and memes of morality and civility make society nicer. 
the exponentially faster circulation of memes compared to genes means that culture evolves faster than biology and sets humans up to do impressive things compared to other animals, like building rockets and potentially terraforming planets. Along the way, we should want to be guided by the good memes and mindful of the harmful ones. By the way, if ideas were the second replicator on Earth, and if their fast replication and evolution set us up to be the dominant species on the planet, what would happen if a third replicator emerged, one that replicated and evolved even faster? I don't know about you, but I would want some good truth-based memes on my side to sort that one out. <laughs>